coming, keep coming. So come and be chainless. Come and be fearless. Come move the foot of Calvary. Here is redemption for every affliction. Presence you 
fantastic and we just praise the Lord for what's uh, going on. We're going to uh, have a look at some verses out of Ephesians chapter 6 this morning and it's uh, entitled The Armour of God. So it's Ephesians 6 and uh, it's verses 10 through to 20. Yep, there we go. Right, here we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Sorry, is it a bit gassy? Oh, can we? That's fine, good. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all flaming arrows from the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Pray also for me, that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given to me, that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly, as I should. And I pray that for myself this morning as we tackle this subject I've entitled Know Your Enemy. On uh, Sunday, the 3rd of September, 1939, the then Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain uh, informed the nation that we were at war with Germany. World War II had begun, and that war cost over 70 million lives. But a far more deadly battle has been raging in the heavenlies against a fierce and deceptive and a cunning enemy. His name is Satan. And that's been going on since the time of Adam and Eve. And that battle has cost billions, billions of lives so far. We, whether we like it or not, we are in a battle, because it's simply a battle of life and death. God has a plan for every nation, for every man, woman and child in this world. And we can sum that up in one single word, life. Conversely, Satan also has an agenda, and that is to come to steal, kill and destroy. Summed up in another word, death. That's Satan's plan. And didn't Jesus tell us that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy? But he said, I have to come to give you life and give it in abundance. Do you know, it's incredibly easy to think uh, the world only consists of what we see going on around us. And if we're not careful, we miss the bigger picture. Uh, the, that, this invisible battle that, say, that is going on all around, them, around us, this battle of good and evil. We know who the enemy is. Uh, the challenge for us is to recognize him and the subtle ways that he works to achieve his agenda. He deceives, he lies, he corrupts, he accuses and brings shame. And then he dangles temptations in front of us to do the things in an effort to break our relationships, to ruin our relationships, our marriages, our families, our homes, our businesses, and our churches. His work is truly diabolical. 
In his creativity, he distracts us with obvious evils that are going on in the world. You know, we know many of them, don't we? The, the heinous acts like sex trafficking that's going on, or the Holocaust at the end in World War II, Putin's invasion of Ukraine, and uh, the aims of Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah to wipe Israel off the face of the map. These are indisputable works of Satan. But there are so many more ways, uh, uh, issues that we face on a daily basis, and yet they either go unnoticed or appear to be more in line with our liberal uh, anything-goes thinking that we are living in today. Even as Christians, I believe, we've come to accept things that possibly 60 years ago would have been unacceptable to us. Satan is on, is on the attack in every area in our society, in our schools, our universities, businesses, local authorities, everyone you name, including our government. And tragically, this is a result of telling God that he's no longer welcome in these places and in this country as well. Uh, we see, um, instead we've opted for the lies and deceit of Satan and uh, we've seen millions turn away from God in our own country. They've turned their backs on Jesus. Wokeism, one of the Satan's latest and most deceptive uh, tactics, if you like, which he's deployed with such guile. And tragically, it's been accepted um, hook, line, and sinker in so many areas of our society, especially in institutions and, and our government. Under its umbrella of lies, uh, there's no room for Christianity. There's no room for the truth of God's word. We've seen a staggering rise in anti-Semitism in the world recently. Again, especially in our universities here and in, the, in America, with tens of thousands of students um, supporting Hamas, a truly satanic organization, if ever there was. And if that's not bad enough, they're calling too for the extermination, the killing of all Jews. These are so-called the academic elites, if you like, and... Uh, possibly the futures of, of lead of, uh, future leaders of our governments and uh, businesses and so on and so forth. Haven't helped us. Why such hatred of Israel? Because they are God's chosen nation. Yeah. Genesis 12, 6. I will bless those who bless Israel, and whoever curses Israel, I will curse. I read that in a, a Christians United for Israel magazine only yesterday that the, the BBC's um, anti-Israel bias was, bre they breached their own rules 1,500 times in four months since October the 7th last year when the, the, the Israel was invaded. We only have to look at the scandals going around, around in our society like that of the sub masters, for example to see the deep-rooted corruption in so many organizations in this country. Uh, according to the Christian newspaper uh, Heart, we now have the most ungodly government ever with the lowest number of Christian MPs in the history of our parliament. We've witnessed a dramatic decline in moral standards in the UK since the 1960s. Violence, language, um, sexual scenes displayed night after night in, in graphic detail. And the same gender issue, which seems not only just acceptable now, but is actually supported and uh, actively promoted in so many areas of our society. I heard uh, a couple of weeks ago that it, the Biden administration in the United States has uh, stopped using the word paedophile and replaced it with minor attracted person, so as not to offend the paedophiles. Perhaps the most tragic of all is the way that church uh, has not spoken out against such evils. Uh, for most part, it's either succumbed uh, to Satan's evil ploys or it's been uh, asleep for the last few decades. Whatever, it's not good. Now, I'm sorry if that all sounds a bit dismal and depressing, but we really, it's the truth, 
And we really shouldn't be surprised, should we? Paul, in writing to the Romans and in his second letter to Timothy, he says, these things are going to happen. He warns us about them. And Jesus, in Matthew 24, says this. He said, he said that wickedness would increase and the love of many for God would uh, grow cold as the end times draw closer. Now that's enough of the bad news. Let's dig into God's word and the good news. All right? Thankfully, we don't have to play Satan's game. God has given us everything we need to overcome Satan's schemes and uh, become conquerors. We do need to recognize and resist Satan and his subtle agenda, uh, but um, God has equipped us and uh, he's, um, we, we can be made aware of the tactics he uses. And don't forget, Satan's number one objective is to try and destroy our relationship with Jesus. Whether it's through intimidation, whether it's through isolation, so that we start doubting him, we start to lose our faith in him. Uh, but God is the source of all good things. Satan, the father of lies, lies is, the, is the author of evil. Paul boldly proclaims, as up in the, the, the banner there, nothing but nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. So the first piece of good news is this, and I love this. Jesus has already defeated Satan. Amen? Great. Do you know, uh, what's three of my favorite words in Scripture come from the last three words Jesus spoke on the cross. It is finished. What a cry of victory that was. You know, he'd done everything his father had asked him. It was mission accomplished. And uh, we now live in that victory. I guess Satan must have had a, a field day when uh, Jesus was nailed to the cross, died, taken down, and buried in the tomb. He must have thought, wow, I've done it. But he was in for a rude shock, wasn't he? Because on the third day, Jesus rose victoriously from the dead and became the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We're no longer under that curse of sin. Psalm 103, there's a beautiful verse that says, as far as the east is from the west, so far God has removed our transgressions from us. Can you measure east to west? You can't, can you? Measure north to south, 12,400 miles, if I remember rightly, but you cannot measure east to west. It goes on and on and on. No longer are we under Satan's iron grip of death either. As Christians, we have the promise of Jesus that we will, we will spend eternity with him in heaven when we leave planet Earth. First piece of good news. The second piece of good news is this, and it's on that banner there, Acts 1, 8. Jesus uh, said, but you, now that's, that's, a plural, that's you, plural. And that's for every one of us in this room. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. It's not a maybe, it's not a might, it might it's not a perhaps, it's a will receive. Okay, get that, because this is so important. Because it means that when we accept the Lordship of Jesus in our lives, we receive his precious gift of his Holy Spirit to live in us. And we have the power and the authority to overcome Satan's attacks. And they certainly will come at some point, even if it's trying to get a gearbox out of a mini. It happens. Now, while Satan is a defeated enemy, um, he is putting up, I believe, a last-ditch attempt uh, to cause untold misery in this world. And it's, it's a little bit similar to the context of the last year of World War II. Most of you are far too young to remember that. Um, even I can't quite do it. But uh, after um, D-Day, after the Normandy landings, um, the German high command knew, they knew they were a defeated nation. 
and yet from the 6th of June 1944 uh, to the 7th of May 1945, they put up the most incredible resistance, that some of the most brutal fighting took place in that last year of the war. So we don't underestimate Satan, but we don't give him any credit. Either. The third piece of good news is one of the verses we just read out of uh, Ephesians 6. God has given us his armor. Okay? And it's a full armor. It covers every single part of us. And we can stand firm against any and every attack from Satan. Paul tells us that we must put the armor on. No good leaving it in the wardrobe, is it? We need to put it on. And uh, once, and that's our responsibility. Nobody else can do it for us. But once it's on, we then can take our stand and remain standing against anything and everything that the devil can throw at us. Uh, and be in no doubt, when we take our stand against Satan, um, he gets pretty mad. He doesn't like it at all. And he wants to retaliate. And as Christians, we are going to see uh, an increased level in persecution as this, in this country as the days ahead of us darken. But uh, as the Lord said to Joshua, be strong and very courageous. And that's what we're going to do. But I don't think it's just a matter of standing firm against the uh, uh, enemy, against Satan's fiery darts. Because I believe it, it's, it's also a time when we start reclaiming some of the ground that's been lost. And this is especially true in the areas of sickness and ill health, in family relationships, and a desire to see people freed from Satan's uh, grasp. To be saved uh, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. We have the power and the authority to rebuke Satan and tell him to get lost in Jesus' name. Don't forget that bit. In Jesus' name. You know, God has given us the power to resist the schemes of the enemy if we choose. But we do need to put on his armour and that, say that's our decision. If we don't, we remain powerless and uh, likely to fall victim to his schemes. I say if we put it on, we can withstand anything he can chuck at us. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says this, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to man. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he also provides a way up so that you can endure it. What did Jesus use? What weapon did he use against Satan when he was taken into the wilderness to be tempted. He used the word of God. He told Satan, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. What did Satan do? He left him and God's angels came and attended to Jesus, Matthew 4, 10 and 11. Jesus used the word of God to defeat Satan and so can we. Take the helmet of salvation and the word of the spirit, sorry, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's when we do. Of course, when the day of evil comes, and it will come, we can withstand the enemy and stand firm. And also, ignorance of Satan's tactics is lethal. We cannot uh, use normal worldly weapons. We can't use guns and bullets to defeat Satan. Uh, we, you know, we can't do it in our own strength. The beautiful verse in Zechariah 4, 6, it says, not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. And again, uh, Paul in 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says this, we, uh, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. You know, we're talking about the, the, the spiritual battle that's going on. The fourth, point, uh, the fourth bit of good news 
is this. We fight from the point of victory, not for victory. Amen? Amen. Listen to what uh, the words of uh, John, uh, in John in 1 John 4.4. 4. He says, you, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Who is the one that is in us? The Holy Spirit, yeah, Jesus. And uh, who is the one that's in the world? Satan, trying to cause chaos. The father of lies. And another weapon, that, uh, the, the same weapon that Jesus used, uh, is the power of prayer and praise and worship. Satan has no antidote to worship. You know, it's an anathema to him. And uh, Paul tells us to pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for the Lord's people, his saints. Do you know, on Wednesday evenings here, we have a, a thing, many of you come to it, I know, but we have a thing called Powerhouse Prayer. Uh, last Wednesday, I think we had 31 of us here for it. And uh, it's a combination of, of prayer, of praise, and worship. And it is such a powerful time. Uh, we, we know, but we know the presence of the Holy Spirit here on those occasions. And it's a time when we do serious business with God through prayer, through praise, and through adoration. Our identity is in the one who loves us, uh, uh, the one who sacrificed his life for ours. And as Paul says in Romans 8.37, on the wall there, no, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Now, while we must never under uh, underestimate the enemy, um, we remember that our, our, our dear, the, the Apostle Peter, dear Peter, fell foul of Satan when he denied even knowing Jesus. But he went on to warn us um, in, uh, in his letter uh, that your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Stand firm in your faith. No, uh, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. So we'd be on our guard, but never, ever give credit to Satan either. Uh, he only goes for moving targets, uh, and the Church of Jesus Christ is his number one enemy. And if, like some churches in the UK that have fallen asleep or succumbed uh, to accepting a watered-down version of Scripture, which is no Scripture at all, or in yielding to the uh, liberal, thinking, woke, orientated uh, Satan's not going to bother them because he's got them where he wants them. Uh, they might go through the motions, but there's no power in their, being, in their performance together. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones expressed his conviction of the state of the church in the UK like this. He said, I'm certain that one of the main causes of the ill state of our church today is the fact that the devil, devil is being forgotten. Many have become so psychological in their attitude and thinking. They are ignorant of this great objective fact, the being, the existence of the devil, the adversary, the accuser, and his fiery darts. But for churches who embrace the, world of God, the word of God and refuse to deviate from it, who worship our Lord in spirit and in truth, that's a different matter. We are a moving target. And uh, Daryl Martin at the back there spoke some months ago about our church here, ABC, being a lighthouse church. And that uh, um, we, must be we must be ready to withstand any of the enemy's devious schemes that he might try to use to derail us from what we are trying to achieve here. Again, I'll make the point that God has provided everything that we need, okay, to overcome the evil one. But I love, I love these few verses from Ephesians uh, 1, uh, 18 to 21. And here Paul shares his prayer with that church in Ephesus that they would grasp the power that is available to them they have in Jesus Christ. Let me read it. it, it this is fabulous. 
I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rules and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but in the one to come. God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness to him, of, uh, sorry, to him who fulfills everything in every way. How much more encouragement do we want than those words? They are incredible, aren't they? We have our, at our disposal the very same power that God used to raise Jesus from the dead. We obviously have our part to play in this. We must depend on the Lord and on his power and strength. The Bible never tells us to attack Satan, but always to resist and to rebuke him, James 4, 7. And when we resist him in Jesus' name, he will flee from us. Paul urges us to stand our ground against the devil and to remain standing. What I've spoken of today is no fairy tale. And as we move forward in an effort to win Appledore for Jesus, we must be prepared for the backlash. Let us make sure that we put on the full armour of God so that we can stand. Perhaps the most important thing to remember is that the battle belongs to the Lord. He has won the victory. He's, and uh, praise God that it's in his strength and the, his might, uh, through his indescribable great power that we have access to, that enables us to be more than conquerors and continue the battle. I don't believe Satan wanted me to uh, share this message today, and he's numerous, uh, he has used numerous tactics all week uh, to throw me off course. It hasn't been a good week, but thank you, Jesus, you won. And uh, we have nothing to fear, have we, except fear itself. And as John says in 1 John 4.18, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. And God's love for each one of us is perfect. I just want to close with uh, another, a couple of verses that come out of uh, the letter to Jude. And again, it's such encouragement to us. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. You want to see Jesus lifted high